Welcome to the Osmo Early Bird Podcast. It's your old pal Emac coming to you with one Adam Ship, my money share, as we're getting ready for a Saturday slate that is real heavy on the afternoon games, as well as the late slate, or the main slate, at 7 o'clock. And we have uh, one lone 1 o'clock game. So we're going to walk you through the 1 o'clock game, which actually is not on any slates unless you're playing the all-day slate on the main sites, or Yahoo, which does all of the games. And even FanDuel got in the act and actually has minor prize pools. Normally, they just play tickets for these all-day slates, but they've got a couple uh, $500,000 prize pools. So not a ton, but it's always fun to do the all-day stuff. Adam, how are you doing here? The World Traveler is at it again. Yeah, doing pretty well. Missing DFS already. Uh, looking forward to get back to playing on Sunday or Monday. But uh, yeah, so I, I guess it's you know kind of nice to not be sweating baseball for a couple of days. Yes, it's not an addiction. It's dedication. Right. Yeah, it just feels like I'm losing money. <laughs> All right. So let's see what hand we have been dealt here. The first game, uh, that long one o'clock game, as I mentioned, is the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim are in Tampa Bay. They've got a four game uh, series there and they are running out Jose Suarez, uh, who is a lefty going against Charlie Morton, the righty. Uh, as we have said ad nauseum here, the Anaheim Angels are pretty, pretty low when it comes to strikeouts, both against lefties and righties. They're in the bottom three for, or I guess top three for fewest. Uh, Charlie Morton, uh, tall order to roll with him, but on the single game slates, or if you want to be different, not a horrible way to go. Would you consider either of these pitchers? Because frankly, the hitters, uh, unless you're looking at like Fam Garcia, maybe Yandy Diaz, uh, Travis D'Arno, if he gets a good lineup spot, if he's in the lineup going against Suarez, not a bad call. But Suarez is not actually a bad pitcher. Adequate strikeout stuff there in the minors. He's been in the minors for a long time, but he's still a relatively young guy. Yeah, not a whole lot from this game in general. I'm glad this one's not really on slates because, you know, when you look at some of the other top tier pitching that we'll get to, Morton doesn't really stand out in a matchup against the Angels. That's difficult for strikeouts. Suarez, you know, isn't a pitcher I'm, I'm, I'd be looking at. Um, but hitting against Morton isn't appealing. And outside of, you know, some of the right-handed power on Tampa, like Garcia, Pham, Diarno, or Zanino, whoever's catching, I expect it'll be Diarno because Zanino caught on Friday night. Uh, it's just not really that appealing. All right, let's get into the good stuff then. We have uh, four games at 405, one at 410, two at 610. That will be the ones that we focus on. We're still missing a couple pitchers there for the six o'clock game, so we will work with what we have. You will get the DFS strategy show at 1115 with Adam and myself. We will go through all of the games, game by game, and we should have at least through uh, the four o'clock games uh, pretty close to what their lineups are going to be when we're doing that show, so it'll be a little bit more informative. We're going to focus on the pitchers here, but we will throw out a few hitters uh, here and there since this is a relatively robust slate and the main sites actually do, uh, being DK and FanDuel, do have some sizable contests here going off at four o'clock. Um, DK is going from the four o'clock through the two six o'clock games, so that'll be a six game slate. FanDuel is doing a four game slate. And then again, Yahoo's going off with every, uh, every start time with games through the end of the night, but their bigger prize pools are going to be at seven o'clock. Do not forget to jump into that um, uh, management fee free tournament. They have it posted already for Saturday. It's $3 to get in, no management fee. So everything that comes in comes back out. And those usually fill by lunch the next day. So uh, I hear a lot of people lamenting that they didn't get in. Well, they're posted now. If you know you're going to play, lock in your spots. The one good thing you can do, you can always bail out. As long, I think if, as long as you leave within 30 minutes until lock, uh, they'll still let you out of the contest. So, Because uh, I had to do that the other day when I got stuck at work. And my work firewall does not let me get to any DFS sites. Sadly, Adam. Sadly. It's like they want me to do work. What the hell? Come on. Yeah, pretty, pretty messed up. Brutal. First world problems. All right, Chris Sale going against your Baltimore Orioles here. Uh, Sale is going to probably be the cream of the crop when it comes to the pitching. He is no stranger to going against Baltimore. Uh, collectively, they have 111 at-bats against them with a triple slash line of a 189 batting average, 235 on base percentage, and they're slugging, wait for it, 279. Wow, that is low. Grand total, one home run, a one triple, five doubles. So this is uh, shaping up to be a nice matchup. And the best thing uh, about Sale, one, he's getting a boatload of strikeouts. And two, the collective Baltimore Orioles in their 111 at-bats have a 58 strikeout total. 
they are striking out over half the time <laughs> against Sale. What do we want to do? Is 20 strikeouts in play today, Adam? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Sale is clearly the number one pitcher in terms of upside, in terms of projection, or, you know, projected points, in terms of everything. His price tag now is at least getting to where it should be. We don't have him at, you know, less than $11,000 on DraftKings anymore, which is nice. There are some cheaper, really good pitchers on this slate. You know, if you're looking to get the bats more, uh, especially, you know, we have, I guess, Coors isn't on this slate, but, um, you know, there are some other pitchers that we can get to in in these early games. So I don't think that I would get to 100% sale like I did the last time, the last two times he pitched. Um, but still, obviously, a really, really good spot for sale, and I would still prioritize getting him. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's really nobody to point out on uh, Baltimore to even consider really as a leverage play. Sale is 11,600 on DK. Strasburg comes in at 10.7. Bieber at 9,600. If you go over to Yahoo, similar story. Sale at 62. Strasburg 53. Bieber at 50. Odorizzi. Oh, that's night slate. Uh, Morton at 49, uh, and uh, and so on. So he's definitely going to be up there. And then DK, it's 11-9 for Sale, 10-8 for Strauss, uh, 8,200 for Mad Bum, uh, slipping Jimmy Nelson in there at 7,200. Remember, they are just doing the four o'clock game, so you do not have. Uh, I've almost said Justin Bieber. Good God, good God. I was hoping he would fight Tom Cruise. That would have been entertaining. I was hoping Tom Cruise would kick his ass. I'm not really a huge fan of Tom Cruise, but much more of a fan of Tom Cruise than I am of Justin Bieber, who, by the way, just looks like a dirt ball, as my brother would say. That's that's all I got. That's all I got. Uh, looking at the other side here, uh, we are going to be looking, I guess, at the hitters. Uh, Dylan Bundy has been improving. Uh, he's still, you know, since the beginning of last year, is head and shoulders above everybody for home runs allowed. Last time I remember checking, it was like 54. The next two closest guys were in the low 40s uh, in that time frame. But his strikeouts are up. His uh, blow potential still there. Any consideration for him as a somewhat contrarian play? Because randomly on Friday night, we did see a little bit of a watered-down lineup uh, without Mookie Betts for uh, the uh, Red Sox. Not really um i mean he does have good strikeout stuff like you said but it's just such a tough strikeout matchup against the red sox i think there are similarly priced arms or at least one that we could get to uh so i mean with it being a six game slate you know you can get some dylan bundy he does have a high strikeout percentage against right-handed hitters but it's just a really dangerous matchup and i don't really want that much of him yeah, and just for perspective, since I happen to have a call up, the collective uh, Red Sox have a 261 average against him. Now, this still has Dustin Pedroia in it and some other players that aren't even really playing, but uh, rather than sort them out, I do want to call it. It's a 299 average, 366 OBP, and a 540 slugging. So, damn near double what uh, Baltimore is doing against Chris Sale, just for some perspective there. So, even though uh, uh, Bundy is reasonable and reasonably priced uh, on the two pitcher sites, it's uh, at six. Oops. Uh, actually, that's not bad. 6,700 there on FanDuel, but what else are you going to try to get with him? But he's 69 on DK. Nice. And then uh, where is he on? He's 36 on Yahoo. So if you're feeling daring, that may be a guy that you want to get to. Um, moving along here, uh, let's see. We've got uh, San Francisco game. So this will be a 1 o'clock local start. And this is what it's like living in San Francisco. They had a bit of a heat wave last week where it was touching 80 most of the days. Uh, at 1 o'clock on Saturday in San Francisco, it's going to be a crisp 60 degrees, Adam. So, hey, we're going to get that uh, vaunted ballpark effect uh, back in place. You have Jimmy Nelson on TK at 8,000. I'm curious to get your thoughts. And then Madsen Bumcarner at uh, 8,400. Uh, this will be the second lefty in a row going against San, or, uh, for San Francisco against the Brew Crew. They had uh, Pomeranz going on Friday night. So we will probably see Ryan Braun. He would be maybe the one questionable guy. But I suspect we'll see Hernan Perez, the incredibly slumping Jesus Aguiar, Lorenzo Cain as the usual guys here. Between Nelson and Bumgarner, 8,000 and 8,400 on DK. Uh, I'm assuming you'd still lean towards Bumgarner. I think it's close because obviously the Giants are much worse offense than the Brewers are. I think that Bumgarner has been you know pretty decent this year, and he's someone that I generally don't give a lot of credit to. But it's still a tough matchup. Um, there's it, it's it, it on paper it's a weaker lineup for Milwaukee against lefties, but you still have guys that 
are you know pretty decent hitters. Ryan Braun obviously is really good. Grand Dahl's worse from the right side than the left side, but he's still not bad. Perez, Aguilar, Ar- Arcia, Kane, you know, they're not it's not the worst group of hitters still. Um, it, it is a good park, of course, but it plays down left-handed power more than right-handed power. Jimmy Nelson's strikeout stuff has been good between AAA and in his uh, first start. Wait, no, he... How many starts has he made? I thought I he made I believe one. he just has one. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, yeah, start against Miami. Um, didn't yeah. strike out a lot of guys there. He he basically, if I remember right, had like one blow up inning. But yeah, he, he had struck one out bad a inning. He went sixty five pitches, which is ex- uh, expected. Three walks, two strikeouts, four earned runs, five totals, uh, one home run allowed. But you know, it is Miami, and they can be giant killers when they feel like it. Yeah, I mean, the walk percentage is what really stands out because that was an issue he was having at AAA as well, even though he was striking out guys there. So you know, definitely some risk on him, but. He's the example of a guy where if, if everyone is shying away on a six-game slate, I would take some shots at it. But if everyone's just saying, like, oh, he's facing the Giants in San Francisco, I think he's expensive enough that you could just go to some other guys. Yeah, and we're right now we're, we've got the early run projection at 3.8 apiece for Milwaukee and San Francisco. On the other side here, Madsen Bumgarner, uh, as I mentioned, 8,400 on DK. He is, uh, let's see, 82 on FanDuel, so he's a thousand more than Nelson there. But on Yahoo, on their all-day slate, he's very intriguing at 36. Uh, Nelson comes in at 33, but on the all-day slate, we really don't have to get contrarian if we don't want to, uh, or if, if it's a spot where we don't feel like it. You don't need to force it because, again, you have all 15 games to uh, work your magic there. But I think 36 for Bumgarner on Yahoo is going to be on the short list for the slate. Yeah, I think that's a really appealing price tag. Uh, you know, I mentioned 8400 on DraftKings is perfectly fine i think 36 is even a little bit better so uh yeah no no issues with them all right and if you wanted any of the the hitters on either side here i'm guessing probably brandon belt uh for the giants is really the only one who stands out on the other side uh uh as i mentioned you have a discounted hernan perez and uh jesus aguiar but uh, everybody else you're paying relatively fair prices so uh, nobody to run to, but if you're on the four game FanDuel or the six game DK, uh, Milwaukee does come into play a little bit because I suspect they'll be contrarian with that price or with that uh, implied run total. Yeah, Belt and Braun would be the two that stand out the most. All right, let's talk about the Washington Nationals. They're going to have Steve, Steven Strasburg. Uh, he is coming in at 10,700 on DK, going against Taylor Clark. Clark has been, well, mediocre at best. He has uh, five starts. Uh, and one relief appearance, 25 and two-thirds innings. He is carrying a 5.3 ERA, a 1.4 whip, just 19 strikeouts in those uh, 25 and two-thirds innings. So I'm really not interested in him until you look at the price, and he is 5,900. DK play only, where do you stand on Clark against uh, the Nationals, who have a 5.7 implied run total? I have no interest in Clark. I don't think he's any good. Um, if I were looking to take a relatively inexpensive pitcher against a good offense, I'd rather take Dylan Bundy. He's uh, just got more strikeout upside. I mean, Clark made seven starts at AAA this year. He struck out 15.9% while walking 86 In the major so far, he struck out 168 while walking 8%. I, I just don't think he's any good. He's been worse against lefties than righties, which depending on the health of Matt Adams, you could get a really right-handed heavy lineup for the Nats, but it's still not like he's been good against righties. He struck out 20.8%. He's allowed a 386 Woba and a 283 ISO. His expected numbers are a bit better at 313 and 182 respectively, but it's still not like those are, are great numbers. And you still have really good hitters in this Nats lineup with Rendon and Soto uh, in particular, You know, possibly Matt Adams, like I said. Trey Turner doesn't strike out a lot. Adam Eaton can be a pain. It, it's just not a spot where I'm interested in Clark. All right, and not to bury the lead, but I, I kind of got lulled into this because we've actually had cooler uh, temperatures out here. I'm uh, about 40-ish miles from uh, both Baltimore and D.C. as the crow flies, which means about you know two hours in the car with the traffic out here. But it has uh, been in the, in the mid-70s with a nice stiff breeze uh, for the last three or four days. But tomorrow on Saturday, we're recording this on Friday night, it's going to be 88 at first pitch in Baltimore, 30% humidity, winds out to center uh, at 8 to 12 miles an hour. And in D.C., it's almost identical. 86 degrees, winds out to center at uh, 9 to 12 miles an hour. 
So uh, definitely a little more favorable to the pitcher, or pardon me, the hitters here. What do we want to do with Steven Strasburg? 10,700 uh, on DK. He is, what was he, 53 on uh, Yahoo, and he is 10-8 uh, on FanDuel. Right. I mean, he's been really, really good this year. He would co he comes in behind Sale for me because Sale, you know, has been better in pretty much every aspect. But you still have a thirty point three percent strikeout percentage for Strasburg. His PCRA is two point eight four, which is about half a run better than his actual ERA. He's got a, a good barrels per batted ball event percentage at five point eight percent. Walk percentage is down at six point three. He's striking out hitters from both sides of the plate. Thirty two percent against lefties. Twenty nine point four against righties. You get a pretty balanced Arizona lineup. I think it's a perfectly fine spot for Strasburg uh, if you, you know, that $900 or so on DraftKings or uh, I think, what is it, like five or six on Yahoo? I don't have their pricing. In front of uh, it is nine on Yahoo as well. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, 900 or nine, you know, both both a pretty big gap there. Uh, FanDuel, you get a difference of 1,100. So, you, you get you're getting pretty sizable differences on between Sale and Strasburg across the industry and i still think strasburg's a really good pitcher if you can't quite find that money for sale all right here's where you get to earn your chops adam our uh, last four o'clock game we have clayton richard uh five thousand on dk lefty going against houston who is amazing against lefties even without george springer carlos correa jose altuve and aledmes diaz they have a 5.5 implied run total here it's going to be 93 at first pitch so there is a chance that uh, they will uh be sheltered shall we say there uh in houston but uh richard at 5,000, would you consider him on the six game dk slate uh against that 5.5 implied run total Probably not, and the reason is that I think there's another pitcher we'll get to that you can consider at a similar price point in a much better spot. You know, I don't, I'm not really picky about 5K or less pitchers that I'll that I'll roster, but you do have Richard going against a lot of good right-handed bats, and they don't, they still don't really strike out a lot. You know, it's not as dangerous a lineup as it is when they're healthy, but it's still not like it's a pushover. And Richard also isn't really very good. Um, so far this season, he struck out just 13.8% of right-handed hitters. He's allowed a 377 expected Woba, 191 expected ISO. Since last season, a 363 expected Woba to righties, 199 ISO to righties with a 14.8% strikeout percentage. It's just not a spot that I'm really looking to take advantage of. All right. You and, you and the inexpensive pitchers, Adam. You may be cheap, but you're not easy. Thanks. That doesn't sound like a fun Saturday night. Earmuffs, kids. Earmuffs if you're in the car with Dad on your way to Home Depot. But <laughs> had to throw out that one. That's those are one of my, my old classic favorite one-liners, along yeah. with going home at, t at 2 with a 10 and getting up at 10 with a 2. <laughs> That's always a good one, too. <laughs> hey, we didn't have Bumble or Tinder back in my day. So <laughs> slump busters for the win. Uh, I'll edit that out later. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, moving along here uh, to the hitting side of things, I think the usual suspects, uh, Bregman, uh, Brantley, solid in lefty-lefty matchups. Gurriel's just been a mess the last two years, but he's going to be in the heart of the order, either, either batting third or fourth. Uh, you may get the, the rookie Jordan um, Alvarez, uh, third, fourth, or fifth. Uh, fingers crossed it's Robinson Chirinos because there's one heck of a contrarian play. His price is up across all of the sites. And then if you're looking for discounts, the bottom three guys probably would be some form of uh, Tyler White, uh, potentially Kemp, potentially Mayfield, Marisnik, et cetera. There's uh, some of your discount plays. Varies a little bit by the the, the three sites here, but uh, that would be where I would look to uh, from Houston. You can kind of go uh, up and down their lineup. On the other side here, we have Framber Valdez. Now he is a bit of a a bit of a riddle, I guess, because we don't have a ton of a track record with him. He has been uh, bouncing around up and down uh, in the majors. He's been working out of the bullpen, uh, et cetera. But he did get the start against Baltimore. Uh, let's see, when was that? That was last uh, Saturday. So it's been a full week, but he did go 84 pitches. Prior to that, uh, he went uh, 65 against Seattle on June 3rd. So he should be good for you know somewhere approaching 90 pitches. Um, you want to take his uh, full season numbers with a little bit of a grain of salt because a lot of that was coming out of the bullpen 
uh, which was more towards his advantage. But he's got, uh, you know, about, what, 0.8 uh, strikeouts per inning, uh, which is not bad. He's got a really good ERA, whip, etc. And he's a lefty going against uh, this uh, Blue Jays team, which can get very righty. So we've got uh, on both sides of the ledger, we have pluses and minuses, but 7,700 on DK probably be the only place I would consider him. But let's see where he is on uh, Yahoo. He is 33 on Yahoo. So I would say no, I would pay the extra dollar or whatever it was to get to uh, Bumgarner there. What do you want to do with Valdez against uh, an enigmatic Toronto lineup that is carrying a 3.6 implied run total, but we know they can bring out the boomsticks when we least expect it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Valdez is an okay option. He threw 84 pitches in that start against Baltimore. He's he struck out about 20 and a half percent of hitters this season. If you go back to last season, he's thrown 824 pitches to righties. He has an 18.3 percent strikeout percentage, 305 expected Woba. 107 expected ISO. So he's done a good job of limiting damage, not really striking guys out. The price tag is a little more expensive than I would really like to get to. Um, I'd be more inclined to take some chances on the power in this lineup because they're underpriced. Vlad Guerrero remains just too cheap for his his talent. Randall Gritchick has been pretty disappointing lately, but he's still cheap and has power. Teoscar Hernandez has power. Uh, Danny Jansen's been horrendous this year, but he's almost free at catcher. Um, I'd be more inclined to just take some shots, you know, with right-handed power on Toronto because we know that while Houston overall is a a favorable park for pitchers, for right-handed power in particular, you do see home runs go up because they have the Crawford boxes in left field where essentially you just have to hit a pop-up um, as long as you hit it in the right location. All right. Uh, now we're on to the 6 o'clock game. So we say farewell to the Yahoo early main slate i'm going or pardon me FanDuel. i'm going back to their all day slate so we can get some pitcher pricing here uh yahoo of course uh runs as i mentioned everything through uh check out the spotlight hitters and stacks article that will be posted for free on the home page of osmo.com third paragraph gives you instructions and the link on how to get in and get 30 dollars in matched uh ysrps yahoo sports rewards points with your initial dfs deposits it's got the promo code there and the link again you're going to need both to have that work but uh yahoo sports reward points are available for immediate use in any contest uh and hey if you uh sign up uh, you can uh, get in that management fee free contest and run all 10 lineups there uh for free for your first one it's a good time we do have uh ownership projections uh regular projections and all the good stuff behind the paywall here for yahoo plus on friday you get uh normally uh uh, Josh Engelman, Jay Kari, and the boss man himself, Alex Baker. You know him as Osmo going uh, through their strategy on how to build lineups. Today it was me and Josh, but that's a fun one because we focus more on building lineups, how to get the six-man stacks to work, the differences in scoring that you have over there on Yahoo, and how to handle the unique prices and what you will see in common analysis for the popular sites, DK and and uh, FanDuel, because of the pricing on Yahoo, oftentimes you'll get overlooked players that are in a great spot. Like today, uh, was it Trevor? I think it was Trevor Richardson was like $34 where he was in the high eights on DK. So you weren't going to pay that there. But uh, on Yahoo, all of a sudden he became a really good deal. So it's a, a different strategy there. It's your best 10 against anybody else's best 10 because that is the maximum in any tournament. Uh, no uploads, but you can still use the cruncher. You can type everything in by hand. Little trick, if you type out a player's name and you get him to the top of the player list, hit enter. You don't have to worry about going back to your mouse. Always a fun little trick when you're trying to chase the overlay there. Adam, our two six o'clock games. Let's start off with Cleveland at Detroit. Potential uh, slight chance of rain there in the Midwest. Uh, again, that we're looking at that uh, 20 hours away, so things can change a little bit. Could be a glancing storm, could be a storm over the stadium, or could not or may not be an issue at all. But we got the Beebs. No announced pitcher that I see yet for Detroit. So uh, talk to me about the Beebs in a glorious matchup here against a less than imposing uh, Motor City Kitties lineup. I love Bieber here. I like. I really like the price tag. Uh, we have him below 10K on DraftKings. He's uh, sale being priced up as high as he is makes Bieber more appealing because you. It, it's not like you um, can really easily get from him to sale. I think it's a great matchup against the Tigers. You know they're the second highest strikeout percentage against right-handed pitching, second lowest walk percentage, which doesn't really matter in this case because Bieber doesn't walk guys really anyway. But he struck out 30.3% of righties this season. 
312 expected Woba. He has allowed power to both sides of the plate. And if you look at some other numbers, he, uh, amongst pitchers um, in his range of, of PCRA, which he's at 3.41, which is it's good. Um, but he stands out as far as barrels per batted ball event. 11.9% of batted balls against Bieber are barreled, which explains why he's giving up so many home runs and so much power uh, when he's, you know, he's just making mistakes in the zone. But the Tigers don't have a lot of power. Once you get past Kristen Stewart and, and Nick Castellanos, you don't have a whole lot to be concerned about. You know, Brandon Dixon's been hitting the ball hard, but it's over a small sample and he doesn't project as someone that actually is a powerful hitter in the major leagues. So you're really just concerned about Stewart and Castellanos and there's a ton of strikeouts in this lineup. So I really, really like Bieber here. All right. And Bieber got a bit of a mulligan there. He on Sunday went against uh, New York. They got to him early. He lasted five outs, gave up five earned runs, uh, four strikeouts, just went 48 pitches. But prior to that, 104, 77 against Boston. I'll, I'll give him that one. 111, 107, 101, 87, 116, 106. Those are some decent numbers there. You're going to get a favorable uh, price per pitch if you want to look at things that way. Uh, and that is something that I often do with uh, some of these guys that don't quite seem like they belong with uh, the names we are used to getting. But this is a reasonable matchup to consider him in. And he actually, this will be the second time he faced uh, Detroit. He went against them back on April 11th in Detroit. He went seven innings, allowed four total base runners, six strikeouts, got the win on his way to 33 FanDuel points. That is a really good FanDuel score. So just food for thought there. Or pardon me, uh, Yahoo. Food for thought there. Uh, FanDuel, I'm not as excited about him at 9,800 in the all-day slate. Doesn't feel good, Adam. Yeah, I mean, one pitcher there. But I, I still think that's a fine price point when you compare it to 11.7 for sale. Okay. Uh, guys in his price point on the all-day slate. Odorizzi is uh, uh, going to be the 7 o'clock slate. He's 200 more. Mike Miner, seven, all these guys are 7 o'clock slates. 9,500. Syndergaard, 9,000. Nola, 8,800. Uh, so just your mileage may vary. may vary. I'd probably try to go for the extra grand to get up there to Steven Strasburg on the all-day FanDuel slate. Last game of our, our early action, we have Pablo Lopez going against Pittsburgh at 33 on Yahoo. That is a nice price. He has uh, tallied 20 or more Yahoo points in four of his last six starts, five of his last uh, seven. However, two of those have been negative points. So we do have to account for that. But uh, not a horrible matchup here against the Pirates at home in Marlins Park. Uh, they don't strike out as much as uh, other teams, but they also don't carry a lot of power with them. And then on the other side, I'm guessing your your cheapy is going to be uh, Dario Agrizal, who is uh, moving on up here. He has started 12 games between Double A AA and Triple A. This is his major league debut for the 24 year old right hander in the Pirates organization. Let's start off with Pablo Lopez. We'll save the tees and we'll get to Agrizal next. Yeah, so I think Lopez is a perfectly fine option. I would rather get to Lopez than to Dylan Bundy and Bundy's matchup. You know, not a ton of strikeouts in this Pittsburgh lineup, but it is a good park to pitch in. Uh, Lopez is a pretty decent pitcher. Um, and I think it's just pretty likely that you get a, a decent, uh, a good enough start out of him for his price tag. So I don't mind going there. Um but Agrizal is the one that really stands out at his price. He's only 5,400. He is stretched out. He threw 91 pitches on June 9th in his most recent start at AAA. 84 prior to that, 97 in the start before that. So shouldn't be any issues with him going deep enough into, into the game. He isn't a you know, great strikeout guy, but he's not bad. He's thrown 49 in the third innings and in, in eight starts this year at AAA. He struck out 20.6%, which, you know, isn't great uh, steamer projects him for 6.1 strikeouts per nine in the majors um but the walk percentage is low he only walked five percent hitters at triple a and more than anything he's a right-handed pitcher facing miami in miami gets a lot of right-handed bats here um i just think that he's cheap enough that i'm fine going there all right best part on yahoo he is 25 he is the minimum will it shock you to know he's not in FanDuel's player pool yeah uh, not at all <laughs> Sorry, FanDuel, but shots are taken when they are deserved. And you never put any of these 40-man rosters in there. Two tips, FanDuel, 
add the 40 man roster and get your technology so it hides the people that are no longer in the starting lineup. The little red tag doesn't make it easy if you're trying to scroll through and find stuff. So just putting it out there. Any final thoughts, Adam, for our relatively intriguing six game slate? No, I think it should be a pretty fun one. Um, you know, do what you can to get sale. Don't be afraid to go down to Bieber or or Strasburg if you can't quite get there, and then take some chances on the cheaper pitching. Um, it'll open up some some stuff for you. There we are. I cannot add to that, but you can follow me at EmacDFS over on Twitter. You can find Adam at ShipMyMoneyDFS, and of course, it is Osmo underscore com. Make sure to follow the main Osmo account as well as Osmo MLB. Uh, Osmo NBA, although that one will slow down a little bit, but uh, we're doing a bunch of contest giveaways where if you follow all the accounts for Osmo, retweet uh, the your question to whatever the answer is uh, with most points scored uh, by a, a fantasy baseball player. Uh, we were doing most points by a combination of players in the NBA, etc. We're giving away uh, between one, three, and six months of premium plus content. Check it out. It's not that hard to enter. It's relatively easy. It's mostly painless, and there is some upside. You cannot argue with that. With that, gamers, we're going to get on out of here, but you can catch us at 11.15 Eastern Saturday morning, breaking down the entire slate, and then we will have live before lock with myself and Chris Spaggs at uh, 6 o'clock, breaking down the uh, 7 o'clock main slate games with all starting lineups. Adam and I will give you uh, our game-by-game breakdown uh, mostly focusing on the pitchers, throwing out a few hitters since we probably won't have any of those early lineups in the morning other than Cincinnati. And I still say, Adam, Cincinnati would be willing, if they had to a week at a time, put out their starting lineup early. Yeah, I wish more teams were like Cincinnati. (laughs) They're the one team that just loves to do it. They love to do it. All right, with that, gamers, good luck.